Yeah, whenever we had uh, this kind of concept to construct a story about empathy by seeing two sides of a conflict, um, we had the two sides, but they were the kind of distribution was different. Initially, this game was going to be open world with several different hubs. And the original hub was you're going to be playing as Abby, who has some backstory, and her and her friends get attacked. They get rescued by Joel and Tommy and get uh, helped into Jackson. And you would then spend a while in Jackson doing missions before some critical point where Abby would reveal who she is and she would be struggling with this choice and then kill Joel. And then you would take on as Ellie going on this journey to Seattle. That would become the second hub of trying to find all these people and um, uh, eventually confront Abby. Uh, but then as we were putting the story together, it just felt with, with the game we were trying to make, with the story we were trying to tell, with the characters we had at our disposal, it didn't make sense for it to be open world. And those aspects felt like they were too much in conflict. And that's when really around the time like Hallie came on and kind of talked high level about the goals of what we're trying to do. And then it became more wide linear with some kind of more open areas. Uh, but where we would try to get to the inciting incident much more quickly, which is the death of Joel, and then get on with the journey. And then some point in the midway through, switch perspective to um, show Abby's side of the story. I is that what you remember, Hallie? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, what. no, no, no. It's funny. You brought back the open world thing. And I was like, oh, right. The first like three weeks of my time at Naughty Dog were just like, can we make an open world? And like trying to make that work and then realizing how much it sort of uh, screws with stakes and tension building. And so we we moved off of that. But we really played with structure, I mean, throughout the entire process. So yes, the game is currently divided between largely between first half Ellie, second half Abby, but we entertained intercutting, we entertained moving parts around, the flashbacks have all moved. I mean, it's a living thing, this game. If I remember the Farm was there very early on. One of the things we wanted to do with the story is one kind of blow up the structure of a traditional classical story. Like the first game is very much a three act structure and has more of a cinematic pace to it. Here we want to take more of like a novel, um, like a, that can meander a little bit. It could be a little bit messier. A novel, and, novel approach. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, spend some time of like showing like, okay, again, what do you stand to lose? Which means through gameplay, we could have you spend some time in, in this environment. There's not going to be any combat. Um, it's going to be slow and intentionally slow. Uh, and then I forget, Hallie, you know, like, for a while we're going down into Mexico and the whole like last showdown took place in Mexico yeah. before we moved it to Santa Barbara. Yeah. But again, I still feel like that was yeah. pretty early on. We knew we wanted to come back to playing as Ellie and going on that final kind of leg and getting that final showdown between these two characters, knowing we're going for very different feelings than your traditional final boss fight. Even early on, like the idea was like, make it feel pathetic, make it feel disgusting, make you not want to participate. I mean, yeah, I remember in the very earliest days, it was all on an oil rig. Um, And these guys were living out on an oil rig and you had to get to the oil rig and get into the oil rig and get Ellie and, or get Abby and, and pull her out of there. And then the girls were like working together to get themselves out of there. And then there was Mexico. And then there was this Santa Barbara, but it was like three times as big and long and wide and, and huge. There was um, a time when you were working through a town and you were like going sort of up to like this, the sort of palate, it was like more of a plantation style. Uh, and there was like more of a palace and you were kind of, there was still a family that lived there and was running right. this whole and thing. You remember like, that? You, you fought yeah. the guy that ran this whole kind of like flavor community. Yeah. And it just, again, it was like a lot of just things we took out. It was like, what are the bare essentials that we need? And, you know, given another year, we probably could have taken more stuff out. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but one of the things we wanted to avoid is the, I don't know, is the Batman versus Superman syndrome, which is like, you see a lot of these stories where you have these two characters going up against each other and then they find like someone more evil than them and they team up and take on. It's like, we wanted to avoid that. It's like to say, it's not about that. So they're not going to work together to fight someone greater. It's all this internal conflict that they have to resolve within themselves. Was it, is it Abby's story? Is it Ellie's story? Is it Joel's story? Is it all three? Because that's a very difficult line to tread or, you know, 
is was the through line just one character story in your in your brains yes i mean i would argue i would argue I'm going to guess what Neil's going to say. Hold on. I'm going to say something. And then Neil, you tell me if this is what you were going to say. But I think ultimately we start from theme more than anything else. So while, yes, I would agree, you know, this is very much all three of those characters' stories. Ultimately, where where we're orienting our, our sales toward is this idea of, of trauma and redemption and trying to make sure that that is... <laughs> the cyclical nature of violence is pervasive in every facet of the game and every character. Um, so, so really that I think was our North star Neil, was that what you're going to say? I agree with you. And, and I, I guess we never, I don't remember conversations where like whose story is it? Because it doesn't really inform how we make decisions about the story. Um, and that's more of like, I think, in, in, as you interpret it, it's like, yeah, I, I totally see the argument how this is Joel's story and he's like present throughout the whole thing. But for us, it's more about point of view. So it's like, okay, we're in Ellie's point of view. And then how do we treat the story and respect that? And then okay, now we're in Abby's point of view. How do we treat the story and respect that? Because you can make the argument is like, in some ways, this is Sarah's story, right? Sarah's like death way back 25 years earlier, like set a lot of these events in motion. And one of the things we're trying to show is like, there's this kind of like karmic thing that's happening is like all these events feed into each other and sometimes showing mercy, like when Abby shows mercy to Tommy and Ellie results in the death of your friends. Um, and there's an argument to be made. There's like, well, if you didn't show um, um, hatred as well, then that would have caused the death of your friends. But the second time she spares Ellie um, and shows mercy with Lev, that actually saves her. Um, without saving Ellie at that point, she would have died at the hands of the slavers. And it's just just showing this kind of knock-on domino effect that all these characters have on each other. Um, so it's really kind of all of their story in some in some way. I think that, we only ever really talked about it in terms of like writer brain about okay, who needs to be the active person here? Who needs to be driving the the engine in any given level? 